I'll start by saying it must have been such a joy for you both to kind of enter into this world that you both knew and loved so much. Yeah, absolutely. I was so excited when I first heard the rumblings that uh, they might be making another film uh, taking place in the monster world. I was really excited and, and knew that I wanted to work on it. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I started at Pixar the month that Monsters, Inc. came out, so I, it always holds a, a dear spot in my heart, so to get to work on one uh, was great. So when you first started at Pixar, did you ever think, did you ever envisage that one day you'd be directing a prequel? No way. <laughs> I don't think I knew what a prequel was then. <laughs> but uh, uh, no, I mean, it's a dream come true. But it must have been really daunting for you both, because to know of this kind of, the expectations placed upon you and to know of the kind of high standard you had to, to meet because of how, of how good Monsters, Inc. was. Yeah, it was definitely daunting at the, at the beginning. The, the great thing, though, is that Pixar is so incredibly collaborative, and, and John and Pete, who directed the, the first one, um, were so generous uh, with their time and, and really helped us out. So we were nervous but quickly forgot um, yeah. and really just focused on the film and trying to make the best film possible. So, but huge support. So, te so tell us about expanding on, on the backstories of the characters. Was there any, uh, anything you wanted to put in but just thought that's not in their nature? And how did you kind of go about deciding how they sort of, you know, became who they are in Monsters, Inc.? Right. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's tough because we were, we were all different at 18 or 19, um, which in a way was good. It allowed us to tweak their characters a bit. We wanted this to be a story about how they became who they are. We didn't want right. to just meet them as they were, yeah. but it meant making uh, tough choices. Like Mike is still really funny, but he's more of a driven guy. He, he has to be more of an emotional guy to really fall in love with his journey. And Sully, who is such a sweet guy in the first film, had to be kind of a jerk in this one. I mean, he's, he's 18, he thinks he knows everything. And luckily John Goodman was able to make that really appealing and kind of fun. Yeah. But, uh, but when we first started it, you know, it's, it's a big tweak on the characters. But I think the fun is watching them tur turn each other into who they are. Because, I mean, this is very much Mike's journey. So, I mean, what, was it, what made you decide that we were going to focus on, on him rather than kind of Sully? We tried, we tried Sully yeah. early on. We figured probably best to use him since he was the main character. But honestly, it was uh, Mike's story was just the heart of the film. And so no matter what we did with Sully, our attention kept going to Mike. We really cared about what happened to him yeah. more in this particular story, and so we, we switched it to Mike. Because, I mean, there is obviously, there's a line in Monsters uh, Inc. about them meeting in fourth grade. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, even though you've got to do what's best for the, this movie, yeah. and I'm, I'm you know, you, you both have, did that niggle at you at all? Was that kind of in the back of your Oh, yeah, yeah for, totally. I mean, we, we talked we, about it for a couple of years, yeah, actually. Yeah, we tried versions. We went versions. back and forth. We tried versions yeah. um, where, uh, where they did meet, and we met them younger in elementary school, and then jumped ahead to college. And it just never, it just never worked, though. It, never, it was never right. It took away from the story, and it took away from they're actually meeting um, at university. Yeah. So we kind of just decided, and Pete and John came and, and talked to us and uh, convinced us that it would be okay if we just let it go and, and focus on what's right for this film. Mainly because the spirit of that line when it was in the first film was just to sell that they've known each other a while. Yeah. And I think we all felt like college is still a while. Right. They could have had a passing meeting in, in fourth grade. <laughs> exactly. We tried it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, now we just say the uh, jealous of my good looks since the fourth grade is just a monster expression. <laughs> and I mean, this film, despite being heartfelt, it seems to be a slightly more comedic than Monsters Inc. I felt it seems to go down that route a little bit more. Was that the kind of aim for you guys? Not to be more, just yeah. to be uh, to really live up to. You know, I love that Monsters is so funny and so emotional. And, yeah. And that was really our. Our goal was just to make it to live in the same world. Right. Because, I mean, um, by, by, by placing this in a, in a kind of college campus, you had that kind of comedic area, didn't you, to, yeah. to explore well, sure. that, yeah. all of those jokes. Yes. I mean, that must have been great fun to, to Right. Explore. And we had the cast. We had an ensemble cast. Yes. You know, we had all of the Uzma Kappas and all of those personalities. And so we had a little more to work with, I yeah. think. Yeah, and we had great actors and actresses yeah. playing the roles. I mean, it, it was just endlessly fun to record with them. And they were fans of the first Monsters, Inc., a lot of them. So right. I think that that enthusiasm really shows in their performances. It must have been great to get Helen Mirren on board because she's yeah. in the building today. That it must have yeah. been a great character as well. Yeah. It was fantastic. Oh, so fun. And, and Helen really got in there and, and you know, pitched ideas of, of how the character could act. And she and I just worked on it for like the first hour of the session. Uh, she was interested uh, right off the bat and yeah. really wanted it to be as good as it could be. So if you could both go back and make a prequel of any film that's ever existed, what would you choose? That's ever existed? <laughs> 
man, that is a great question. Um, I don't know. Boy, that's a good... Um, a prequel to Leaving Las Vegas where he's just really happy and married and everything's great. <laughs> Sounds good. So I just I just ask as well, what, what is it about this monster's world that you both love so much and that you think resonates with so many or millions of people worldwide? Well, I think it's a world that you is, is so different and so kind of fantastical, but very gettable and relatable. We've created two movies where I think we um, kind of talk about universal things, un universal emotions, and I don't know, that, that pulls, pulls you in. So you have these crazy looking monsters, but they're having very human emotions. That's what I love, yeah, and the mundane yeah. with the fantastic. Yeah. I mean, I love that it's in the totally. first Monsters, Inc. of just, yeah. they just, it's <laughs> their job, work with you know? Their box and, and, and that was <laughs> the fun of this, is like, well, how kind of, you want to make it spectacular, but how mundane can we make it? They right. should just be college students. Yeah. So is, is this the last we might be seeing of, of Sully and Mike, or is there... No idea. We don't know we're, now. Yeah, uh, we're, we're just, still wrapping we're, this up. <laughs> we're in this one still, and uh, so we'll see. No idea. So just finally, what is what is sort of next for you both? Have you got any kind of projects lined up? Are you working on anything at the moment? A drink by the pool. Yeah, that's the next project for us. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for your time. Much appreciated. Thank cool. you. Thank you. Yeah, Great. thanks so much.